Okay, now we're going to talk about stitching in the ditch. And right now I've got my walking foot on, so my feed dogs are up, so the machine is going to guide the fabric through the, through the machine. So it is controlling everything. And so what you, the first thing you do is pull up your bobbin thread, and I'm right at the spot where I want to start stitching in the ditch. And by stitching in the ditch, I mean stitching right in that seam line. And it just accents blocks, it accents piecing to do that. So it's something that I do quite often. So I pop up my bobbin thread just like I did previously and hang on to that and then set my machine so it's going to be right in that line of stitching. And the only time, this is one of the few times that you use your walking foot. When you're stitching from one end of the quilt to the other, that's a good time to use your walking foot. And in a little bit I'll show you when you can do ditch stitching without your walking foot. But right now this is a great idea to use this. You get an even stitch length without any trouble and you keep a good grip on your fabric as you're going and just kind of open up that seam and lay the thread down right in the seam. And so what it's doing is it's outlining all of the piecing that has been done on this little quilt top. So you continue doing this all the way through the quilt. Now the one thing about using a walking foot is that when I get to the end of the line of stitching, I have to stop, cut my threads, move my quilt, and go back to the next line of stitching. So that's where your walking foot does have a little bit of uh, more time consuming because you do have to stop and start again. So, but that is what is involved with using your walking foot and this is the best time to use it is when you're going from one end of the quilt to the other. Now that we've gotten all of our stitching in the ditch done with the walking foot, we've gone all the way from the top to the bottom of the quilt, done all the sashing strips both directions. Now I'm going to show you how to finish doing the stitching in the ditch inside the blocks. This is where you do not use the walking foot because you want to be able to stitch in every direction. And by that I mean we want to go, I'm going to secure my threads right here at the beginning and then keep on going down this line of stitching in the seam. And then you've got an option here. I could go along this line right on this seam to get to the next seam or I could have secured my stitches there and jumped over to that seam. Because this the thread matches the sashing I can sneak over there in the seam line. So it's, it's kind of two options that you can do there. So I'm going to go back up to the top and now I want to go over to this side of the block. So I'm going to secure my stitches right there. I'm going to raise my needle and I'm going to jump to that spot. Put my needle back down in the fabric, secure my stitches, and stitch crossways over to the other side. And of course you can really see the stitching because I'm using a really dark fabric or dark thread. So when you're actually doing stitching in the ditch on a quilt, I recommend that you use a thread that disappears into that into the fabric. So you want to use a matching color and if you have, you're kind of between two shades of that color, use the darker color. It disappears faster. So then I can go across here in the seam line and get to the next line that's not stitched yet and stitch across there. So all of my stitching in the ditch is done on this block. I never had to stop and cut my threads. I got it all done in one swoop and now I'm done with that block. While we're on this block, I want to show you another little filler idea for something that's, you can use this in four patches or nine patches. Um, I've done it in flying geese. There's a lot of different places that this works. And it's just crescents and it's really cool because you can keep going and keep going and keep going without ever having to stop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch inside these blue blocks and just do a little filler stitch doesn't have to all be exactly the same size crescent, but it gives a little curve 
to an otherwise very straight block. And it fills in the entire thing. And see how I'm the top of the quilt is staying here. I'm stitching in every direction. Filling all of this in, never having to stop and cut my threads. It's definitely not perfect. And then stop right there. So you have just a little filler, it gives more interest to a nine patch, something that has really straight lines. It's just a real simple way to fill in.